So welcome to the third section of the course. It's called Day-to-Day -day Rx. In this section, we'll see practical implementation of Rx.js. We'll be first building a stopwatch application. And in the second video, we'll be implementing drag and drop using Rx.js. So in the first video, as I said, we'll be building a stopwatch application. We'll be using our previous knowledge. Also, we'll be learning new tricks. So the goal of our application is to make a stopwatch application. We'll have a start button, a stop button, and a reset button. Also, we'll be displaying the time. Now, if we click on the start button, the time increases, we can stop it, we can start again from there, and we can reset everything. So now let's quickly start on building this application. I've already set up the HTML for this application. Here we have a start button, a stop button, a reset button, and a placeholder for displaying time. It has minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. Also, I've already included RxJS. Apart from HTML, I've also added a bit of CSS. You can pause the video here and copy it, or you can put in your own styles as you wish. So now, let's quickly start on to writing this application. We'll open our Babel panel, and also open the console. In addition, I'll also open the output panel and let's adjust everything on the screen first. So now that we have our workspace set up, let's start thinking about our application. As this is a stopwatch application, it is quite obvious that we would require an interval observer. Also, the observer will be controlled by clicking on these three buttons. So we need an interval observer and click streams from these three buttons. So now let's start by selecting these three buttons and getting click streams from them. So the query selector for these three buttons would look like this. We have our start button, our stop button, and our reset button selected. Now let's make streams for them. So we'll make three streams here, a start stream, a stop stream, and a reset stream. And these streams would be generated from the click events on these buttons. So this is fairly straightforward. We use from event. We pass in the DOM element and we listen to clicks. Now let's write our interval observer. So our interval observable will emit a value after each second. Now let's console log this value. So now after writing our console log function, if we run with JS, we can see in that console that after each second a new value is being emitted. So as we see, the interval stream starts on its own, but what we really need is the interval stream to start when we click on the start button, that is, with the start stream. To achieve this, we have a special operator called switch map to. What it does is, on an event on one stream, it can switch to another stream. So let's write it down. We'll call our app stream, which is equal to start stream dot switch map to interval stream. All it means is whenever we have an event in the start stream, it will directly switch to our interval stream. So now let's remove the console log from the interval stream and put it on the app stream and we'll remove this variable. Now let's run with JS, we'll clear the console. So even after clicking run with JS, there is no interval stream being logged. But if we go now and click on the start button, our interval stream will start and we can see that it's incrementing a value after each second. So now let's clear the console, let's run with JS, and get back to our code. So by now we have added the ability on our app to start a stream when a button is clicked. What we need to do next is to stop a stream when the stop button is clicked, that is, using stop stream. So now let's write some code for it. So basically all we need to do is we need to keep listening to the interval stream until a stop stream event comes in. For this, RxJS has an operator called takeUntil. Let's make our new stream called possible stream. So our possible stream is equal to the interval stream take until stop stream. All it means is we'll keep listening to interval stream until an event from stop stream comes. Now if we plug our possible stream Instead of the interval stream in the switch map to, we run with JS, we clear the console, and now let's start. 
So we can see the values being incremented after every second. Now if I press the stop button, the values stop incrementing. Hence we can see that we have stopped listening to the interval stream because we clicked on the stop button and generated a stop stream. Now let's see what happens when we click the start button again. Our start button again generates a value from 0, but what we need is to generate the value again from 6. So this should have been 7, 8, 9 and so on. So let's stop our stream and let's get to fixing it. So what we basically need here is a function that keeps a track of previous values. For achieving this in Rx, we have an operator called scan operator. The scan operator takes a function and an initial value. The scan operator's function takes an accumulator, which keeps a track of the different changes in the values. And the initial value is provided to the accumulator. Let's have a look at it. So we'll add our scan operator. The scan operator takes a function and an initial value. The function will take an accumulator and then we can manipulate the accumulator. So every time we need to add one to an accumulator and we can start this accumulator with a value of zero. So now let's clear the console. Let's run with JS and let's check. We start and our stream starts with one, two, three and each second a value increases. We stop our stream. Now if we start again, it should start with 8. And we can see our stream starts with 8, 9, 10 and it goes on further. We can keep repeating it. We can stop it again, start and we can see it's always increasing from that previous number. This is because our accumulator keeps a track of the previous changes and keeps adding 1 to the previous value. Well before we move on, let's refactor this a bit. If we clear the console and we run with JS, we can see there is no value coming initially. And when we are displaying in the DOM, we probably need to display a zero here. So now let's remove the initial value from the scan function and put it at the top. Let's say const initial is equal to zero. Then we start our stream with this initial value. So here we write start with and we provide the initial value. Now, if we clear the console and we run with JS, we can immediately see a zero. And now if we start, it'll keep incrementing the values. We can stop, we can start again and see it's all working the same way. Also, let's tidy things up. We'll remove this function from here and we can give it a variable. Let's call it incremental function. And then we'll call the function inside of scan. And we can quickly check again that it still all works. So our initial zero is there. If we start, it starts with some number. We can stop and we can start it again. Now that we have our start and stop functionality working, let's try to work on the reset functionality. As we have our increment function, which takes a value and keeps on increasing it, we can have another function which we can call reset. All it does it takes a value and returns the initial value, which is zero. So now if I copy the reset function and I scan with the reset function, I can clear the console and run with JS. You can see there's an initial value of zero. Now if we click start, it'll keep producing zero because we added a reset. But we don't need this. We need the increment and reset to switch between each other whenever these buttons are clicked. So now let's clear the console and go back to fixing the code. So to get these functionality, we need to pass these two functions down the stream. Let's start with one function. To pass a function down the stream, let's map the function. For now, let's map to the increment function. So simply we write map to and then we pass increment. So now our increment function is being passed down the stream. So now our scan function will take two values, first being the accumulator and second the current function. Now we can apply the current function over the accumulator 
and let's clear the console run with JS and we check the initial value of 0 is still coming now if we start the value increments if we stop and we start again then we can see the values being increased now the only thing we need to do is somehow find a mechanism to switch between the increment and the reset function so let's do it now to achieve this we need to somehow combine the stream coming from the reset stream and the stream coming from the possible stream. So let's write it down. So our increment or reset stream is equal to rx.observable.merge which we have seen in earlier videos. And then we pass on two streams. First the possible stream being mapped to the increment function and the reset stream mapped to the reset function. Now we can safely remove this line from our code and instead of passing the possible stream to switch map to, we can pass the increment or reset stream. Now let's clear the console, run with JS and let's check. The initial zero is still appearing. If we start, our stream starts properly. If we stop and start again, our stream continues from there. And now if I press reset, it outputs 0. If we start now, it will start from 0, 1 and so on. So now the functionality of our app is working. But uh, there is one bug, which we can have a look now. So if I clear the console, I run with JS. And let's start the stream. Now if there is a stream already started and if I press reset, then notice carefully, it will go to 0. And then keep on incrementing. It doesn't stop the stream unless I press stop. To solve this, let's look into our code. From our previously written code, we can see that our interval stream will only stop when the stop stream is being called. So we need to combine the stop stream and the reset stream and then pass it to the take until function. So let's do it now. So we simply create another stream called stop or reset stream, which is equal to the merge of stop stream and the reset stream. And it's fairly simple. So let's copy our stop or reset stream and plug it in the take until function. We clear the console, we run with JS. And now let's try. So we start our stream. If we stop it and start again, it starts from the previous value. Now if I reset it, it'll show zero and it'll stop. And this is because we merged both the streams together. So now we have successfully finished all the functionality of our app. The only thing remaining is rendering to the DOM. So let's get started with it. Our interval currently works in one second. Let's reduce it to one hundredth of a second. We can quickly check this again. We clear the console, we run with JS, and when we start, we are incrementing values at 100 of a second. So let's stop this. And now let's write a function to parse these values. We need to extract the seconds, the milliseconds, and the minutes out of these values. So let's write down a function. We call the function to time. It takes a parameter called time. Then for milliseconds, we are taking the remainder of 100. For seconds, we first divide by 100, then take the remainder by 60. And for minutes, we simply divide by 6000. So now let's map these values to our function. And we clear the console, we run with JS. Oh, we need to move our two time function above this call. So let's put it on the top. And let's clear the console, let's run with JS. And we can see that initially we have an object of millisecond 0, minute 0 and second 0. Now if I start, you can see it's increasing seconds and milliseconds and so on. So let's stop this, let's clear the console. And let's get back to our code. So now we have an object of time which returns milliseconds, seconds and minutes. We need to render these to the DOM. So let's select the DOM elements. So we can select the minute element, the seconds element and the milliseconds element. Now let's write our render function. So our render function will take the time object, 
and it will render the data in the appropriate elements. Now instead of console logging, let's put the render function here. We clear the console, we run with JS and we automatically see zeros coming out here. We don't need the console so let's hide it. Now if we start, we can see the values incrementing. We can stop. We can start from the same value again and then we can reset. So now our app is completely functioning and working properly. We'll now just tidy this a little bit up more. So before we pass it to a render function, let's pad these values to add one more zero if necessary. So our padding function is really simple. It takes the number. If it's less than nine, then it attaches a zero before it. If not, then it simply converts it to a string. So now before rendering, let's pass the padding function to each element. So we put the padding function. And let's run with JS again. We can see we have now double digits. We start, we can stop, we can start from the same point again, and we can reset. So with this, we have created our first real-world RxJS application.